And here we are on December the 9th of 1996 on a nice cloudy day here in Las Vegas with another Reevemobile. This is number 15 since I uh, began owning cars in 1968. This is the best car I've had by far and this is a beaut. This is a 1991 Olds 98 uh, top of the line touring sedan model in absolutely beautiful shape. This is the second white car I've owned and um, I bought it on October 1st of 1996. Really just a fabulous car. This car has some unusual things about the windows. For one thing, the windows are smaller than they're making them on the current 90s cars. They're almost a throwback to the 60s as far as size. Number two, this car has one of these little vent windows toward the front, which does not open up. It's just for styling. But uh, they dropped these in the, on cars, I think, in the, like the late 1960s, so this is kind of unusual. Plus the fact these windows are tinted a very heavy green, which is really great for the Las Vegas hot climate. Makes it very, very nice. This is the Touring Sedan model, and um, I actually did a lot of research about these cars. I learned about them. Look at the dirt there. Uh, before I bought this thing. There's actually three different models of the 98. And this is the top of the line. This car was $29,100 when it was new. And cost me a small fortune to register. Someone actually ripped off my front license plate and the bracket, which belongs right here, where these two holes are. So right now I have the license plate in the front window <laughs> until I just uh, take this thing to a dealer and get the bracket replaced. But this is in beautiful shape, as you can see. And uh, let's see, there's only one ding on the whole car and that's right here in the trunk you probably can't even see too well it's right there it's actually a ding there and a ding up here but that's it the rest of this car is just immaculate let's go inside now and show it off this is the first car I've had with a remote control <laughs> entry unlock this locks the car and this opens the trunk if you push this once, the unlock button, it opens the driver's side door only. If you push it again, it opens all four doors, which is kind of nice. This is the second car I've had that has a light gray interior. The first being my Pontiac 6000 STE that I bought back in 89. This car is so clean, it looks absolutely new. It really does. There's a typical window controls, mirror controls, and all that. First car I've had with a power window lock. And when this is activated, of course, you can't open the uh, windows except from the driver's seat, which is kind of nice. The car does not have a digital dash. This is an analog dashboard. You can barely see in there. There we go. But it has all the necessary gauges, which I also like. So that kind of took priority over a digital dash. This is really, really clean. Beautiful leather seats. Not a marker or scratch on these suckers either. Here's the rear, again, absolutely clean, just beautiful. This has the usual pockets in the back seat, and this is the first car I've ever had that has a uh, rear vent control for the heater and the air conditioner right there for the rear passenger's comfort, located right above the rear ashtray, and there's your light. Again, very, very, very clean. This car does not look like it's almost six years old. Okay, we're now sitting in the front seat, and it got, of course, a lot quieter. Uh, let me show you some controls on the dash. There's your Twilight Sentinel, which is a typical Cadillac uh, feature. Your interior lights, high and low. Here's your standard uh, GM light control. Headlights and all that. Here are gauges, volts, temperature, speedometer. There's a tachometer fuel and oil the bottom we have you can barely see trip odometer and a reset for that that's where the display is here's the information center which is one of the main reasons I bought this car which we'll show you in a little while over here we have a test button which monitors certain systems of the car and your English and metric settings over here are your typical climate controls heat air conditioning direction and all that 
Next to that are your radio controls and your cassette and deck and cassette controls. Oddly enough, this car does not have a loudness control, which really irks me because there's no bass whatsoever. There's your equalizer, which is about all you have in the way of tone controls. It's just not enough. Below that is a whole bank of buttons, which is available, I found out, only on the Touring Package and the uh, Upper Scale Regency Elite models. These are what shows your display in the Information Center. These ten buttons here. There's your rear defroster. Next to it, where there's a blank space, that is a button for front de-icer, which is not available on the models meant for the south and the west, only on the models meant for the northern part of the country. There's your fuel economy. Fuel is your gas gauge. It's actually like a digital gas tank. Range shows you how many miles left on that tank of gas. Speed is the average speed of the car. Oil is actually your um, for your oil changes it's a, a percentage ratio 100 down to 0 shows when you have to get an oil change the gauges are just a digital readout of four gauges oil battery temperature and your tack destination ETA and ET are for uh, trips you can program the number of miles in between trips uh, how many hours it takes to get there and stuff like that number 0 DT and TM is the date and the time Next is to enter different uh, things and an off position and then reset position. So that's the touring package. The steering wheel actually has the remote controls on it too. For the first time I have a control on the steering wheel for the fan, which actually turns on the heating or air conditioning depending on your setting, and the temperature control. Here's an airbag, first car I've ever had with an airbag, which of course is nice. And here's controls for your radio and your cassette deck. Volume up and down, and seek up and down for the radio, obviously. Let's see if I can get this. Now, this is always tricky. Is a remote control for your uh, gas tank. You can't put gas in the car unless you release the door from this re uh, remote control. And next to it is one of two remote trunk releases, which is kind of nice. And what else do we have? Over here we have a cup holder. You push this, it flips up. You can put uh, soda cans in there or whatever. Below that is the ashtray, which looks like it's never been used. Over here is the shift lever with your different positions. Um, I wonder if I could get this, but...